So the question is, why did I choose Ecuador? Why not Colombia? And why not Mexico? Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before you. Colombia comes up because I like Colombia. I talk about Colombia sometimes, so why didn't I go there? And why not Mexico? Mexico is going to be short and sweet. And I'm not going to say that it's accurate, but it's why I personally chose not to go to Mexico. I've been to Mexico a number of times. I never cared for it that much. The areas I went to were more deserty and I, I just don't like that. And I realized there's mountains and all of that, but I didn't go there. But the real reason I, I wouldn't choose Mexico is I had a friend who went to Mexico and it was like something right out of the movies. He, um, uh, he was arrested by the police he wasn't really doing anything in particular. They just seemed to think they could get something out of him. And he ended up about three months in jail. And when I saw him shortly after he finally got out and got back here, um, he had lost a lot of weight. Um, he, he didn't really want to talk about the details, but you know, apparently he had a tough time. And so Mexico briefly was on my radar, but bottom line is any country that will do those things on a regular basis and not correct them is not a country I want to live in. Now, people that are in Mexico or have been to different areas of Mexico, I know they're going to have a different story and they're going to talk about the beautiful places and the people and all that. And I get that. I understand it. But the question was, why didn't I go to Mexico? And that's just the truth. That's just the truth. I'm not interested. Um, not to say it's not a great place. I, I may never know. Uh, as for Colombia, um, I had some personal experiences there that might give somebody pause, um, but I highly recommend Colombia. I think it's a great place to go. I absolutely adore the culture and the people there. It's different than Ecuador. Ecuador is fairly unique, so you can't really compare. One's not the other. When I was in Colombia, it was maybe 12 years ago, approximately, and the FARC, it, they call it a socialist revolutionary. What they really were, were criminals. They were drug criminals, they were kidnappers, they, they would take, take over villages entirely and run them like a crime family. And FARC was throughout about half of the country and where I was, there were quite a few FARC. And my ex-wife is from Colombia, and she had her own story that um, she's a teacher. And when she was, uh, for about a six month period, I believe it was, she was teaching in the campesino out in the country with a, with a friend teacher. She, the two girls were there with students numbering about 30 in a one room schoolhouse. And the FARC came along, and at gunpoint of their AK-47s, they held them for three days. And um, she, she was terrified. She had a lot of relatives in Medellin. And in those days, it was occupied throughout the city by criminals. Uh, you couldn't go from one block to the next block without paying a toll. Um, you, you don't go out at night, you, you know, six, seven o'clock, you, you're in for the day or for the night. Um, it was not a great place. But then they, they got a president, uh, what was his name, Aribe, I think it was. I may be wrong. It was around 2001 or 2002. And he basically had enough. He brought in helicopters filled with military landed them right into the city and street to street fighting, he cleaned the place out. Um, today, it's a shining example of a wonderful, modern, clean, uh, beautiful city. Uh, um, he got a lot of criticism at the time, but Columbia is what it is today because of the actions he took. And um, 
not that that matters, not that this is a history lesson, but um, there was a trade agreement that was done with Colombia in the United States, and Colombia has benefited greatly from it. it the wealth of that country has been growing exponentially. The city that I lived in, Pereira, which is near Armenia, um, was a relatively poor city. It had one or two high-rise hotels. And last I checked on the internet, there's over 100 there now. It's, it's just exploded and it has become one of the manufacturing uh, bases for the entire country. Um, the climate in Colombia is terrific. It's probably along the lines of uh, Vicabamba for a lot of these cities. A little warmer than Cuenca, a little more uh, sunshine throughout the year. The um, Armenia, Pereira is the heart of coffee country. So when you talk about Colombian coffee, uh, that's where you go. So if it's so great, if it's so wonderful, why didn't I go there? Um, I could have. It was honestly, it came down to kind of a toss of a coin. And when I got frustrated and was having a lot of problems with my permanent residency visa here, I was one more rejection away from just packing up and going to Colombia. So that's how close it was. I'm here, I'm happy that I'm here, and look, there's no rain today. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day. And <clears throat> except for this weird season with all this rain, which is very unusual, and it's broken historic records for rainfall, uh, this is more what I'm used to. This is more the Ecuador that I've been living in. It's, it's, a, it's just gorgeous. Um, so I'm happy being here. It could have been Colombia. I, I highly recommend Colombia to people. Uh, there's some people will say, and you'll read, the cost of living in Colombia is higher. Well, for some things, but uh, overall, it is absolutely not higher um, because imported items don't have the high uh, tax on them, so you don't have to pay double or triple you know, to purchase something. A new car, for example, let's say in the United States, we just use numbers for an example. Let's say it's $10,000 in the United States. It gets to Colombia, it's about $12,000. It goes to Ecuador, it becomes $20,000. So when you factor in televisions and cameras and cell phones and clothing and all of those things, into your cost of living, um, Colombia is is not more expensive than Ecuador. Now, rents and those sorts of things are are better, lower cost in Ecuador. But again, it depends. In Cuenca, the gringo style apartments keep going up, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand. Um, because people are coming and not shopping around and they're just paying it because, well, that looks pretty good compared to where I came from. Um, those same apartments were two or $300 less a year or two ago. But everyday rents, you can rent a house or an apartment or that sort of thing for considerably less. Um, rents for people in this area, um, locals, are typically in the $200, $250 range. Um, that you're not really going to find in Medellin. Uh, but like I said, there's a lot of other things that offset it. So it's not going to be overall any more expensive for you to live in Colombia than it will be in Ecuador. So I hopefully that sheds some light on, on my decision, answers the question. Uh, but my decision doesn't matter. You're going to have your own decision. And as I uh, explained the Mexico portion, your personality, uh, 
how you feel about things certainly comes into play and don't disregard it. I imagine if I had decided to ignore my feelings about it and go to Mexico, the first time something happened, oh, hell no, I'm not going to be here. See, I knew it all along. And, you know, it's, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. It's going to be a negative. And I don't want to live with that either. And I don't want to jump at the first thing that happens and, and you know, change up my life. Um, I don't think that's a good way to go into a situation. And, and so many people are in Mexico far more than in Ecuador, and they're loving it. Um, but it's, it just wasn't for me. There are other places you can go that have this kind of nice climate, like Guatemala, Lake Adelan area, Panama, uh, it's getting a little crowded and it's all gringos, but you can get up in the mountains there. Uh, but, you know, crime is, is something to consider and the crime stats in Mexico are quite high. In Guatemala, they're high. In Panama, they're high. And in Ecuador, uh, they're low. Uh, Colombia, historically, they were high, but that's been crashing like the 29 stock market. Uh, it's become very safe. The changes in Colombia have been rapid. So I'll be going to Colombia uh, sometime before the year is over just for a visit, some people I haven't seen in a long time. And I was, I'm sure I'll do video when I go there and, you know, report. I'll report on that when I get back. So uh, Colombia, is it a good choice? Yeah, I think it's a great choice. Um, but it wasn't my choice. Here's my choice. I'm happy. Uh, I don't have any regrets. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, sometime before the end of this week, hopefully I can put together the video about what is a facilitator and why do you want to have one. Um, as always, thank you. Please like, subscribe, um, all those wonderful things. And uh, thank you for watching. You know you could